Now at 9, we'll have the latest on a multi-car accident involving Kansas City wide receiver Rasheed Rice. Plus, the carnival makes its way to Metal Arc Elementary in Pittsburgh and... Think you know how to spot a deep fake? It's not as easy as it looks. I'm Eben Brown in Miami. I'll have that story straight ahead. The four states most watched news starts now. You're watching KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Anthony Saviello. Today, a Pittsburgh Elementary School community came together for a carnival. KOAM Samantha Walker has more on how the event benefits a good cause. Uh, we're having fun. Meadowlark Elementary in Pittsburgh was filled with students, but they weren't there for class. Students and their families gathered together for the school's annual carnival. Attendees could play various games, win prizes, get face paint, or jump in a bounce house. I'm very excited. I, um, I'm very happy to be here um, experiencing in this or being involved. And volunteers from across the community came to help support, including local football players and students from other schools. It's exciting to see the support that the school has from the community and the people who donated items for the silent auction um, and just having that for the school. Attendees could bid on various silent auction items. Organizers say the proceeds from the auctions and carnival go to a very special cause. We have just ordered a book vending machine and that is something we've been raising money for for the last two years and so the money from Carnival is going to help fill that with books for students to earn um, through showing positive behaviors and different skills and things within the school building. For students and their families, the Carnival is a way for them to help bond in a place they go to every day. It brings in the families into the school where they don't normally get to be a part of and it just bridges that gap between school and home. And for some, it's just a place to have fun with their loved ones. One student described the carnival as a water slide because... Maybe because it's how fun it is. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Organizers say if you are interested in helping sponsor the upcoming book vending machine, you can call Meadowlark's front office to learn more. It was a great day outside. Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us with a first look at weather. So today was really nice. We had pretty low humidity values though, less than 25% across the region. Temperatures got up to about 71 degrees and it was a clear skies all day long. Temperatures across the region right now starting to drip down into the upper 60s. Some counties still hanging around in the 70s. Chanute is still up to 72 degrees. Now we don't have any rain in the forecast. We had some showers last night that passed through our region and cleared a dry air mass that moved into our region today, giving us some significant fire weather concerns. Now we don't have anything else going on until tomorrow evening and clouds do roll in earlier in the afternoon ahead of the storm system that's coming in Monday night. But luckily we'll take a look and see that most of the clouds have a lot of breakage in them for the solar eclipse viewing. And I'll show you all that in just a bit. All right, Lindsay, thanks. According to his attorney, Kansas City wide receiver, Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice was driving the speeding Lamborghini involved in a six car crash in Dallas on Saturday. Rice is said to be fully cooperating with police and answered all of the questions asked of him about the crash. The NFL receiver also expressed a willingness to help the others involved in the crash. In a social media post, Rice said, quote, I take full responsibility for my part in this matter and will continue to cooperate with the authorities. I sincerely apologize to everyone impacted, end quote. Washington University students are not happy with the university after it reportedly did not take any action after African-American students and staff were reportedly assaulted. Justin Andrews has more. It's truly disheartening and make me feel like, wow, we're still doing this in 2024. State Representative Lakeisha Bosley outraged over allegations aimed at Washington University students. The Association of Black Students at Wash U accused White Kappa Sigma and Alpha members through eggs at black students and black dining workers. We're told this happened at the Bears Den Dining Hall on March 21st, two weeks ago. 
because this was done to African American students and staff members, um, it, it kind of, it, it feels very quiet. Washington University is tight-lipped on this incident, only acknowledging the allegations and not commenting on this specific incident. Its statement reads in part, we are committed to creating a campus environment where all feel welcome and respected. It goes on to say we will work directly with our students to address any concerns they may bring to us. WashU not confirming if Alpha Phi or Kappa Sigma are temporarily suspended. I would think the university should have acted more swiftly and with more transparency. John Bowman, St. Louis County's NAACP president, says Washington University is the last place he'd expect to hear this type of conduct because of its prestige. Strong support pouring in from state rep Lakeisha Bosley, Lindenwood's Black Student Union, and Harris Stowe Student Government Association, among others. But as a state legislature, um, I think it's imperative that we stand behind those student unions and those student organizations when they are feeling um, a certain level of attack. WashU's Association of Black Students is demanding all be fully held accountable by terminating the chapters and expelling every individual involved. Bosley says hearing this news creates new wounds that look like the past, and that's why education is paramount. It's so important to have policies that um, uh, adopt diversity, equity, and inclusion. Holiday Lanes in Pittsburgh is kicking off its annual four-state tournament this weekend. The tournament categories include singles, doubles, and teams with more than 200 participants. Event organizers say this tournament gives people of all ages the chance to play a great sport. Um, we get to see a lot of our tournament bowlers only once or twice a year, and we've been seeing a lot of these folks for many, many years. Um, I've got people that have been playing it longer than I've been around, and I've been doing it for 29 years. So it's kind of nice, a lot of camaraderie. This is the 63rd year the bowling alley has hosted the event. Coming up, a lucky someone in Oregon just became the world's newest billionaire. An Oregon Powerball player won the $1.3 billion jackpot Sunday morning, putting an end to one of the game's longest streaks. Powerball confirms the winning ticket matched all six numbers. The winner has the option to take a cash value of $621 million as a lump sum. The winning numbers were 22, 27, 44, 52, 69, and the Powerball 9. The St. Louis Cardinals held their home opener this past weekend. Those who attended Friday and Saturday's games can relish in the Cardinal victories. However, several people who attended also fell victim to a scam. Brent Solomon brings us more. It's one of the most exciting days of spring in St. Louis. It was our first time coming to opening day. Um, and we, my fam, my whole family came, my four children, my grandchildren, my husband and I. Julie Cuiava traveled from Mount Vernon, Illinois. We were having a hard time finding parking. We happened across this lot uh, where there were like three guys in vests. It was a grassy lot here on Broadway, about a 10 minute walk to Bush Stadium. My son was like, you know, we've been driving around for 30 minutes trying to find parking. We can't find any. So we parked there along with probably about 100 other cars. I mean, it was, I mean, they were rolling in. They went to the game and had a blast. Afterwards, they returned to a big shock. Every single car in that lot had a ticket. The family was slapped with a $30 fine now due to the city after already handing over $40 to what now appears to be a fake parking lot attendant that was right here. There were guys in vests taking money. A city spokesperson shared this with five on your side. All our staff are identified in uniform and their vests state City of St. Louis Parking Division on the back of their vests. If someone is in an ununiformed vest, this is a fraudulent and unauthorized attempt to collect your money. City leaders say grassy lots like these are not meant for parking. They encourage drivers to use city-owned lots and parking garages. There are also private lots, but you have to make sure they're legit. Knowing that what that means to, the, to people in the city and outside of the city to come to opening day at a Cardinals game and then to have you know, 100 cars in the lot where we were parked alone get parking tickets is just crazy. 
A new study reveals that Americans feel like they need a lot more money in order to retire comfortably. A Northwestern Mutual Planning and Progress study revealed that many Americans Around feel comfortable to retire unless they have a record $1.46 million saved up. According to the study, that figure is up 15% from last year's 1.27 million and a huge leap from 2020 with the ideal figure sitting at just $951,000. As the use of artificial intelligence escalates, we're seeing more scams using so-called deep fake technology, leading to new efforts to determine exactly what's real and what's fake. Fox's Evan Brown has more from Miami. As the use of artificial intelligence escalates, we're seeing more scams using so-called deepfake technology, leading to a renewed effort to fight back. But with AI getting more sophisticated every day, how can the general public tell the difference between what is real and what is fake? Experts say at the moment, the biggest red flag is AI's lack of knowledge about the physical world, which can often lead to manipulated images that couldn't really exist without the technology. All our previous knowledge of how to detect modified images is out the window and we have to start looking for things that are just lacking in general knowledge about the world. But there's also a growing acknowledgement that it is now virtually impossible to spot most deepfakes, prompting companies like OtherWeb to develop new models of detection, with AI battling AI to help determine what is real online. We are going into the territory of actually verifying certain things and you eliminate that layer of misinformation or low quality information. Ultimately, most experts agree that a new verification system is needed and everyday web users can't be expected to become deepfake experts. We have to be very skeptical, at least while we are in this transition period, where it's really difficult to know what is true. We just have to assume it's false. The market for deepfake detection technology was worth more than $5 billion last year. They expect that to triple in the next two years. In Miami, Eben Brown, Fox News. Lindsay is next with a complete look at the forecast and later how Shake Shack is throwing shade at Chick-fil-A. I hope everyone has had a wonderful Sunday. It's been pretty dry and sunny all day long. Taking a look outside, Downtown Joplin from Cornell Complex camera. You can see still not a cloud in sight. Winds were gusting pretty fast today around 30, 35 miles per hour. And we did have incredibly dry conditions due to the storm system that passed our region, pushing in a dry air mass through our area. So most of us had less than 30% humidity and even lower than that. Some of us were down to about 15% humidity, so very dry, still pretty dry in the region. And we did have those wind gusts. So today was a pretty fire weather kind of day. Now continuing on through tomorrow, we'll see winds pick back up tomorrow morning around 930. They'll continue to gust. This is 130. So right about the time everyone's going to be wanting to be outside for the solar eclipse. We'll see some winds gusting 20, 25 miles per hour. Nothing too crazy, but you could experience some faster winds tomorrow afternoon. Then they'll clear out as those storms start to head in. We'll take a look at what you can expect to see for the solar eclipse. So this is about 130. If you plan on driving out of town anywhere in Arkansas or even eastern Missouri, you'll see a lot of breakage in the clouds. Still, if you're going to the West Plains area, maybe still um, more cloud cover there. But everywhere else is looking to be pretty clear for the time of the solar eclipse. And even if you're staying in the Joplin region and surrounding areas, you'll see a lot of breaks in the clouds as well. So most of us will have a good experience for the solar eclipse. Now afterwards, clouds start to increase. And then we have some rain chances starting to push through around midnight in our southern county. So if you plan on driving far and driving back all in one day, you might want to watch out for some storms that are coming through, especially storms through Arkansas. Now, continuing on about 2 a.m., we'll see an isolated thunderstorm or two, but mostly just some scattered rain showers. But still about 3 a.m., maybe a storm pushing through Joplin. But they'll clear out pretty quickly, giving us a cloudy Tuesday, partly cloudy most of the day, and then continuing on. We'll also take a look at what you can expect after that, but we're not seeing many severe concerns for tomorrow with a marginal risk just clipping some of our southern counties. So the main threat is going south of us. 
After Tuesday, we are going to start to see more rain push in Tuesday evening and storms popping back up on Wednesday. Wednesday morning around 330, we'll have some thunderstorm chances pushing through. Now continuing throughout the day on Wednesday, some more rain showers continue. Rain showers start to clear out early Thursday morning, and then we'll have a mostly cloudy day on Thursday and maybe some windy conditions. So for the next several days, we'll have clouds and rain throughout the day. But Monday for your solar eclipse should be staying pretty clear for the region. And then the rain comes in later on Monday after midnight. So not too bad. If you can't make it into totality, that's OK. You can go get those sunglasses and just, you know, our sit region down on the back is still porch. in about the 80 percent, you know, yeah. viewing range. So not too bad. I mean, yeah. you'll see a majority partial solar eclipse. But don't, not with your bare eyes, use the glasses. Use the glasses. Absolutely. Use, definitely. Thanks, definitely. Lindsay. <laughs> Webb City High School today performed the day the internet died for the community. The comedy demonstrates what would happen in today's world if the internet died. A synopsis of the show says it embodies how much present day culture relies on the internet when it comes to shopping, communication, and social media. The show, which is described as a comedy, was written by Ian McWethy and Jason Pizzarello. I want them to contemplate how, how much do they use the internet? How much time do they you know, spend stuck on that screen compared to talking with their spouse, with their children, uh, with uh, community members, with the church members, whoever they come in contact with. Today's performance was at the Cardinal Theater. Coming up, some Californians are getting ready for a higher than life celebration. Cannabis fans will have an opportunity to celebrate in the city of San Francisco. After city officials canceled the annual event due to budget cuts, the cannabis community decided to jump in and take action. Enthusiasts decided they will still celebrate even if it's not at Golden Gate Park. Weed Week is kicking off on April 13th, and it's meant to be a celebration of cannabis culture and the rich history it has in San Francisco. Marijuana activists and professionals say events like this unite the cannabis community and help educate more people about its benefits. Shake Shack announces free chicken sandwiches and throws some subtle shade at Chick-fil-A. The fast food chain announced that they will be giving out free fried chicken sandwiches every Sunday in April. To score the free Chicken, Shack, chicken Shake Shack sandwich, fans must place a $10 minimum order and then they can enter the promo code Chicken Sunday to earn their free sandwich per order. While the burger and shake chain doesn't explicitly call out Chick-fil-A by name in a press release that the company does say that the goal was to the, the goal of the new deal is to quote one up a famously closed on Sunday's chicken sandwich fast food chain. A pet food company will make someone grin like a Cheshire cat by giving cash for showing some cool cat love. The Akana Pet Food Company wants to pay the winner of a questionnaire contest $10,000. Just be the best one to answer the Akana questionnaire on their website. The winner will visit a Best Friends Animal Society Pet Adoption Center and Cuddle Kittens for four hours to help promote care for kittens in need. 8.4 million laundry pods have been recalled over unsafe packaging. Gain, Flings, and Tide... Aerial, the Ace Pods liquid laundry detergent in flexible film bags are included in the Consumer Product Safety Commission warning. The commission warns that the packaging meant to seal access to the contents can, quote, split open near the zipper track. They said the malfunction can cause injury to vulnerable populations and children if ingested. Up next, how Band-Aids could be bad for you. The Environmental Health Sciences Independent Lab and advocacy blog Mammovation say in a new report that some adhesive bandages, bandage products may contain a type of synthetic chemical known as PFAS. 
The Environmental Protection Agency notes that these forever chemicals may be linked with an increased risk of cancer. The report says the chemicals are in bandage products such as Band-Aid, Curad, and in store brands from CVS, Walmart, and Target. However, no negative health effects from the products have been reported. 30 more minutes of news, weather, and sports coming your way. Despite raising record donations, the Biden administration still has its hands full. He, with, we'll have the latest details from the White House. Fox is getting a first-hand look of two men trying to cross through a hole in the wall of the southern border. Fox News correspondent Matt Finn is there with the latest. We're standing on Mount Cristo Rey in Sunland Park, New Mexico, and we have seen a steady stream of illegal migration activity here. In fact, a few points, our cameras caught scouts and coyotes monitoring us, uh, running away from us. And Border Patrol here tells us the coyotes are wild. They'll throw rocks and defend the illegal migrants they're smuggling. We only spent a few minutes on this mountain before a group of about 15 illegal migrants breezed right past us. Also here in Sutherland Park, New Mexico, our crews have spotted many holes in our border wall. In fact, we spotted two men trying to climb into one of the holes from Mexico, but they saw us and took off running. They screamed at us, let us cross. Why are you so racist? Fox cameras also capturing this bust of migrants right after they crossed into New Mexico. Border Patrol agents drag tires on their trucks here to smooth human smuggling paths so that they can easily spot footsteps. We're outside of Sunland Park, New Mexico in the El Paso sector. We're walking along what's referred to as the Obama wall and Border Patrol points out these holes in the wall. They say cartels cut them to smuggle humans through. They're referred to as doggy doors and Border Patrol says they're so overwhelmed right now they can't keep up with patching them. And this is a wider look of Mount Cristo Rey. A lot of illegal immigration activity here. Border Patrol tells us that oftentimes they try to work smarter, not harder, and wait for the groups of migrants to cross down to ground level, and then they hope to apprehend or arrest them there. In Sunland Park, New Mexico, Matt Finn, Fox News. Relatives of the hostages being held by Hamas held a rally in New York City on Sunday. The six-month anniversary of the surprise attack the militants carried out on Israel. Hamas killed more than 1,100 people in the offensive and another 250 were kidnapped. 134 people, most of them Israelis, are still being held captive. The demonstrators said it's long past time to bring the hostages home. The conflict between Hamas and Israel has also left nearly 33,000 Palestinians dead. The White House managing a delicate situation when it comes to its relationship with Israel. The president now pressed by members of his own party to slow down or stop the delivery of new military aid after this week's killing of seven aid workers in the Gaza Strip. Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson has more. After calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, President Biden appeared pleased with the changes that Israeli forces have made following the botched drone strike that killed seven aid workers. Did you threaten to stop military aid to Israel? I asked them to do what they're doing. Dozens of Democrats, including former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, have written President Biden demanding a halt in weapon shipments to Israel. The top Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee weighed in earlier. The central point here is we want Israel to change the way they are conducting this war. Now, Israel has had a very aggressive approach from October 7th forward, and it's it's understandable why they reacted that way. It is not working to their advantage, and it is causing a devastating humanitarian crisis in Gaza right now. Many Republican lawmakers disagree and say Hamas must first release all the remaining hostages, including some Americans, before any ceasefire takes hold. Now is not the time to waver on supporting Israel when they're in the middle of this conflict. And I've been a, a strong proponent of this war ends when Hamas is eradicated. And, and people in Israel will never forget October 7th, but it seems as if the Democratic Party is forgetting the, uh, October 7th. 
It appears the tipping point in U.S.-Israeli relations was the Israeli drone strike earlier this week that killed seven aid workers, including an American, Monday night. Israel took full responsibility and sacked two senior officers and punished three others. A similar drone strike during the American withdrawal from Afghanistan in August 2021 that killed 10 civilians, including seven children, went unpunished. U.S. and Israeli forces in the Middle East are on heightened alert after Iran vowed revenge after an Israeli airstrike killed a number of senior Iranian commanders in Syria earlier this week. At the White House, Lucas Tomlinson, Fox News. The Biden campaign has raised over 90 million in March as the president continues to lead donations over his opponent. The Democratic National Committee and Biden's re-election campaign said Saturday they have ended the first quarter of the year with over $192 million in cash on hand. The Biden campaign says that 96 percent of that donations were less than $200. Former President Trump's campaign is attempting to catch up. It raised over $50 million at a Palm Beach fundraiser Saturday. Jordan has sent what it's describing as its largest humanitarian aid convoy to the Gaza Strip since the Hamas-Israel conflict started. It said the supplies will be delivered with the help of international humanitarian organizations before the start of Eid al-Fatir. Eid al-Fatir marks the end of the month-long dusk to dawn, dawn to dusk fasting of Ramadan. Jordan says since the beginning of the war in Gaza, it's sent 460 trucks and carried out 72 airdrops of food and other humanitarian aid. The country also says it's taken part in another 150 airdrops with other nations. Still ahead, we'll take a look at the top five movies from the box office this weekend. Well, sun started to set today and we're going to head into tomorrow. Looking forward to the solar eclipse that's moving through. Taking a look outside at downtown Joplin from Cornell Complex. You can see winds are also starting to die down quite a bit. We had a gusty day today and some really dry air as well in our area, giving us some significant fire weather today. Now, we had some storms pass through Saturday that brought that dry air mass in, but the next system that we're tracking is moving in Monday night. Don't worry, we're, clouds won't be coming in until right around the time of the eclipse, but it'll still be mostly clear for the event, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. Humidity levels are starting to rise. Today we had less than 15% humidity and wind gusts, so that gave us some pretty significant fire weather. We'll have more fire weather chances throughout the week as well. Now winds pick up again tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. We'll see gusts 30, 35 miles per hour. They'll continue on. This is about 1.30, so when we're going to see the solar eclipse, still gusting 20 to 25 miles per hour, so you may see some faster winds in our area. Now it'll die down as that rain starts to make its way through. We'll take a closer look at what we're expecting to see in regards of cloud coverage. If you're planning on going to Arkansas or even eastern Missouri, you'll see a lot of sunshine and you'll see that solar eclipse perfect view. However, if you're going to West Plains, you may see a little bit more clouds in the area. And if you're staying in our Joplin region, some more clouds in the Joplin region, but surrounding counties may have really good visibility for the, the event as well. Now clouds start to increase throughout the evening hours and about 12 a.m. we'll start to see those rain showers push through. We may have an isolated thunderstorm or two throughout the evening hours, overnight hours. Around 2 a.m. we'll see some storms pop up and even 3 a.m. we may see an isolated thunderstorm going through Joplin. Now it'll clear out by about 7 a.m. on Tuesday. We're going to have partly cloudy skies for Tuesday, but Nothing's going to be too severe. Our main threat is going to be mostly in our southern counties, and it's still just a marginal risk, main threat being fast winds. Now, after that, we're having more rain chances throughout the week. Tuesday, it'll be partially cloudy, but Tuesday afternoon into the evening hours, we'll start to see some more rain chances push through. And on Wednesday, we'll have some thunderstorm chances push in, and we'll have a pretty rainy day all day on Wednesday. Rain finally clears out Thursday morning, but we're going to get a lot of rain. That's good for our drought conditions as well. Temperatures cool off a bit, but they'll start to warm back up. And by next Sunday, we could be seeing temperatures up to the 80s. Looking forward to that. Monday, we have some more 
thunderstorm chances as well. So quite a lot of rain chances in the forecast. Yeah, we need it. Just had rain. Now we need more rain. We do. We need the rain, need but it. I'm glad the rain is holding off for yeah. the eclipse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Lindsay. Coming up in sports, the Missouri Southern Lions look to cap off their weekend series with a win. Plus, Iowa faces South Carolina for the national championship game. Brock Baldridge has the highlights and more coming up next. The Missouri Southern Lions only have a handful of games remaining in the regular season. The Lions look to get back on track for their Sunday series finale. At Warren Turner Field, Missouri Southern facing the Broncos of Central Oklahoma. We begin the first inning as Garrett Rice hits a deep fly ball into the wind. The outfielder can't find it and guess what? Nobody else can either because it's gone for a three run homer. Lions lead it three to nothing. We go to the fourth inning now. Southern is down five to four. Nate Miskowski hits this ball deep to center field. Caleb Glass is out of room and it's out of here. Two run home run and the Lions take a six to five lead. We go to the fifth inning. Southern looks to extend their lead as Garrett Rice hits this ball into center field. Glass can't make the play here and watch this. The ball's gonna bounce off of his foot and roll away from him. Two runs come to score and Missouri Southern leads it eight to five. A few batters later, Drew Davis singles sharply up the middle. Rice will score. Missouri Southern clinches the series. Lions win this game big, 17-6 the final. Elsewhere in the MIAA, the Pitt State Gorillas face the Central Missouri Mules. And there's a reason they're ranked number two in the country. UCM completes the sweep of Pitt State by winning the series finale 13-4. The Gorillas hit the road for Emporia State on Tuesday. Well, it's been two years since the Kansas City Royals have a record above 500, but that was the case on Sunday as the Royals look to complete a four-game sweep. Windy day at the K, taking on the team from the Windy City, top of the fifth, former Royal Andrew Benatendi hits an RBI single to center field. White Sox get out to a 3 to nothing lead. So we head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Hunter Renfro's had a slow start to the year, but... Puts a good swing on it, and you can put this ball on the board. Yes, two-run home run is first of the year. Royals get within a run. It's a 3-2 to two game. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning now. It's the same score. MJ Melendez belts his high fastball into the fountain deck in right field. It's gone for a go-ahead two-run home run. White Sox challenged this play to see if there was any fan interference, but after review, the call does stand. Royals sweep the Sox. Kansas City goes on to win this game 5-3. Meanwhile, the St. Louis Cardinals wrap up their series with the Miami Marlins, who are no longer winless. Miami takes down St. Louis 10-3. The Cardinals will stay home and face Philadelphia on Monday night. Well, Sunday marks the final game of the women's college basketball season. The Iowa Hawkeyes look to win the come back and win after losing last season as runner-ups. And on the other hand, South Carolina looks to go undefeated. Kaylin Clark, the biggest name in the game, looks to win Iowa's first national title. So in the first quarter, Iowa leads by eight points. Kaitlyn Clark shoots this from way beyond the arc and she drills it. Hawkeyes lead by 11. Later in the half, USC starts to go on the run now as Camelia Cardoso works down low and she picks up the bucket plus the foul. Such a tough player to defend. Iowa only leads by one point. Over to the third quarter, South Carolina leads by eight. Tessa Johnson is ready in transition and she drains that three-pointer. Gamecocks lead by 11. Iowa made it an interesting fourth quarter now. Six-point game, just over two minutes left in the game. The jumper for Carolina is no good, but Cardoso is there for the rebound and the putback. That pretty much seals the deal. South Carolina goes on to defeat the Iowa Hawkeyes 87 to 75 and the Gamecocks our national champions, South Carolina, caps off the undefeated season. That's your look for sports. We're back for more news after this. The most popular movies in theaters this weekend primarily involve primates. David Daniel isn't just monkeying around. He has the early box office estimates for the top five films. Where's the skadoosh? Kung Fu Panda 4 made $7.9 million for fifth place and a domestic total of $166 million. The first Omen debuted in fourth place, finding a weaker than expected $8.4 million in the collection plate. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire came up with $9 million, giving the latest paranormal comic adventure third place and $89 million domestic. 
Monkey Man opens strong in second place. Dev Patel stars and makes his directorial debut with the action drama, which made $10.2 million. Something is coming. Something even they're afraid of. Godzilla Kong The New Empire keeps exceeding expectations. The latest Monster Mash easily kept the crown with a $31.7 million weekend for a 10-day domestic total of $135 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Up next, celebrating 50 years of ABBA music with a flash mob. It's been 50 years since the Swedish pop group ABBA released its first big hit, Waterloo. On Saturday in Warsaw, Poland, a flash mob took over a metro station and danced to a live rendition of the song. The peppy tune begins with the lines, My, my, at Waterloo, Napoleon did surrender and I have met my destiny in quite a similar way. The song also rang out in major cities across Europe, like London's Waterloo Railway Station, as well as in Berlin and Stockholm. Swedish public broadcaster SVT said April 6, 1974 is considered by some to be Sweden's National Music Day. You can dance, you can jive. That's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll leave you with a video of a few animals enjoying the snow at the Milwaukee County Zoo. From all of us here at KOAN, have a great night.